What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. So we're on a little different route today. I got a sidekick with me. You guys remember Rachel? I think you guys do anyways. This is my wife. <laughs> um, we made a early morning trip to Bass Pro Shops. We dropped the kids off at school and then uh, I had to go pick up a new toy at Bass Pro Shops. And um, A toy or a tool? Both. A loud toy. You're supposed to at least justify it. I can't. <laughs> Anyways, um, so you guys know we did the little hunting youth camp at uh, Keeping It Dutch's place last weekend. Well, my friend Brandon, he forgot something. And uh, he forgot it in the Polaris Ranger. And he texted me, said, hey, is this in there? And this is something that could potentially save his life. So uh, we made a little, uh, what's it called? We made a little detour. detour on our trip today on our way back home. And because he's back up here, he lives down south, but uh, Brandon with Eddie Family Farms, he's back up here out in an exotic animal cell. And uh, this is what he forgot. A bright orange hunting vest in, in the state of Oklahoma. You are required to wear those in rifle season and muzzle loading season and all that. And him and Leighton and his other kids, they hunt and stuff. So I thought it was important that we try to get that back so they have enough of them. So we're going to swing by here at this animal cell that they're at but i think he did this on purpose because he's been begging me the last two or three times they've had this auction he's been begging us to come by here and i think he might have uh planted that in the ranger so he could say hey swing by the animal cell and bring me that vest i don't know we didn't bring a trailer didn't bring a trailer i've we've we've been wanting to come here um you know they got everything here like camels and zebras and donkeys and cows and all kinds of different birds and monkeys and all kinds of stuff so i've kind of purposely not came here because i was afraid that we might get tempted to buy something that we don't really need for the farm back at home but you but who knows don't say we're, we, we're gonna you. go here and take a look i don't know if i'll film any i don't know if they allow that or not but uh, i'm gonna go catch up with brandon and i think stephanie's here i don't know if his kids are here i don't know who all is here so just uh stay tuned I don't know. Oh my goodness. What do you think? I don't think we can fit that in our trailer. It's way bigger than I expected. Yeah, it I know to be. it. Hey, Brandon, you got a trailer big enough for this? No, <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd just bring it to your place for a little bit. Well, you if know? you can get it there, I'll take it. That's why <laughs> I have to ride him. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that far, about 15 miles from here. Yeah. Yeah. We can strap him down. I think that's a big camel there. Now, they do have a baby one that's going to sell here in a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, a little bitty one. That one will fit in the back of the truck. Look at this. I ain't used to these big, big birds like that. They don't hurt. Uh -uh. Well, the emus hurt when they do that. They'll, they'll really? break your skin, yeah. No. Always that's play, crazy. Play with them. They're pretty. They're big, big birds. I want some, but, you know, you're going to have to get a fix. Yeah, yeah. Call, so you'd have to modify everything for sure. A little baby. All right, guys. So we are back home. Um, I'll, I'll tell you guys about the auction here in just a minute. It's actually very interesting. But look at this real quick. The cold front is here. We had to get home because we got some stuff to do. We are going to get the very first freeze tonight. And look at these two boys. Look at these. Oh, I love this bed, Dad. I even got my own little kitty cat to keep me warm. Look, Smeagol loves laying by Mojo because he's just a big fluff ball. You get you two boys keeping each other warm, huh? Hey, Smeagol man, what you doing? What you doing? So yeah, we are home from the auction. And uh, believe me, that is a crazy auction. A lot of awesome animals go through there animals i have never even heard of they had like multiple species of the things that you see but then they had like multiple varieties and hybrids and all kinds of stuff and i seen something that we really do need um talking to some other people there uh sounds like we need to get another female emu and they had a bunch but they just sold but Rachel and I, something did catch our eye, and we might be going back tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We might be adding some different animals to the farm. Maybe one, maybe multiple. We don't know yet. But we've seen a bunch of emus, but they just sold. We barely missed it. He said, oh, I could uh, use some more friends around here. 
So talking to some people that know a little bit about these emus, they're saying that he's probably just getting his hormones, teenage stuff, you know, boy stuff, and that's why he's chasing her around and all that. So we might have to get another female, an older female, to bring home and uh, put in here with him and kind of teach him a lesson, get him acting right, right? You need, you need a tune-up, don't you, buddy? We don't need any more goats. They did have some goats there. But uh, Rachel and I had to leave early. She had to go pick up the kids from school. And I had to get home because we are going to be getting our first freeze tonight. And I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. Um, we're supposed to be getting our first hard freeze tonight. I don't know how cold it's supposed to get. But right now, we're still set up as we were in summertime. We've got water hoses still hooked up. Uh, you know, we still got a lot of green grass and stuff. You don't want to leave your water hoses hooked up. So that is what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, we learned the hard way when we first built this house. We got these frost-free hydrants on the side of our house. And they weren't supposed to freeze, but one of them, I guess, wasn't put on right. It wasn't like, um, it was like at, flown back into the house. They're supposed to be just slightly at an angle to where whenever you turn off the, the hydrant, all the water comes out but it was at an angle or something that we had to have it replaced because it actually busted the first year but that is where these come in handy um these are just faucet protectors you can get them at walmart you can get them on amazon they are like about four dollars or so they're very easy to do so this is this is an easy way to protect your hydrants from freezing so you take this little ring right here you slip it onto that like that put this up there like that this has a little button, you just pull it. And there you go. It'll keep that nice and tight and it will keep all the warm air from your house around your hydrant. It won't let the uh, cold stuff freeze it. So I got one more I'm gonna go put on and then we gotta do some feeding before this rain comes in. Oh, I guess we'll get the big bucket now. Since it's getting colder, we'll start feeding the goats again. All right, looks like the big man's gonna come. He's sitting there waiting on me. He was sleeping on his little bed over there on the front patio. And uh, as you can tell, he is definitely interested in eating oh wait he's got a little sidekick with him look at that <laughs> smeagol and mojo smeagol said mojo you're so warm why'd you leave mojo said i'm hungry smeagol i gotta go get my vittles so i can stay warm tonight you ready to go eat big man oh if you got that good stuff i'll come eat for sure it is raining a little bit i'm not worried about that I'll dry off. You ready to go eat? Huh? You smell that? You smell the good stuff in, in your little feed bucket? Oh, that smells really good. Mmm. Alright, Dad, let's go. Come on. Come on, Mo. I ain't gonna beg you. Come on. That's your good stuff. Come on. Yes, goats, it's time. They see the, uh, they see the notorious orange big bucket that they're used to. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's starting to it's really misty and it's kind of sprinkling a little bit. Oh! Alright, how are we going to do this? Mo, are you coming? I guess. Give me a minute. You guys ready to start eating good again? Alright, how are we going to do this? Because uh, you guys are going to knock me over. I'm to get some, don't worry. I've got plenty to go around this go around. <laughs> got a lot less mouth to feed this fall. That's a good thing. Come on, big man. <laughs> 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 Come 
we go. All your nom nom mixed in, your egg, everything. How about that? Thanks, Dad. It smells really great. You did a good job. All right. Okay, so now the rain is coming down. You guys might be able to see it. So, Yone and Yoshi, um, you can see she's still coming around. He's not been chasing her as much. But uh, like I said, after talking to some people that are experienced in raising emus, they said we should probably get at least another female. And uh, that will help out him. Especially if we get an older one, she'll kind of put him in his place. You know, if he starts that chasing stuff, she'll tell him, hey, you're not doing that to me, buddy. So uh, we might have to do that. Do some old school stuff, right? Yoshi can't be picking on Yoneg. She is a little bit smaller than Yoshi. Uh, they're right about the same age. <laughs> that little baby got choked. It's not funny. Um, they're not real used to eating the dry food. And when they do, they eat a whole bunch of it. It makes their, their mouth really dry. And they have a hard time swallowing, so they got to kind of slow down. They'll kind of get foamy, foamy at the mouth, so you got to watch them. Now, here's the deal. There, there's always a risk. So, one thing I don't like bringing new animals home is... You never know if they're going to get along with your other animals that you already have on the farm. And you don't want to bring home a problem animal. Um, a lot of time at these auctions and stuff, um, people like to take their animals that are problem animals. Now, these exotic animal cells are a little bit different. Um, normally, that's not the case. Normally, your problem animals are going to go to a cell that you see that they have like every two weeks or something. This is held like twice a year. Um, people raise these exotic animals up and then they'll wait until they have this big exotic animal sale and they'll bring them in and most of them are vet checked and stuff like that so you're usually pretty safe at those but you're never guaranteed so um you don't want to bring an animal home that runs ruins everything you've already got going so say we brought home an emu um how do you know that emu isn't aggressive towards other animals or other emus and stuff like that you don't want to bring home a problem animal because you can see ours now they get along pretty good he's just starting to chase her a little bit but he's not being mean to her, like hurting her, being aggressive. He's just kind of chasing her, doing boy stuff, being typical teenage stuff. He's like, hey, you're pretty. Let me see you, blah, 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 all that, whatever. So I don't know. We uh, we missed out. We didn't get there early enough to bid on the emus. So uh, we might just have to try to find one another way. But it's good to be able to talk to people that know more about them. Because like I said, we're pretty new to the emu game. So it probably wouldn't hurt to have another emu around. We got rid of the ducks. We got rid of some geese. We did uh, get rid of some goats. So we got a lot less mouse to feed here. So we got this, we got structures over there, and we could always we could always be building. It wouldn't hurt to ever have another barn or something. But there's something else that caught our eye that we are interested in going back tomorrow and possibly bidding on. Um, I don't know. We're I had to uh, call Brandon and he's asking some questions and stuff for me because he's going to be there all day. No telling what they're going to end up going home with. But um, probably by the end of the day I should know if we're going to go back tomorrow and uh, try to bid on these animals or not. And uh, if we do it will be something totally new to Hidden Heights Farm. So be sure to stay tuned. So I'm going to try to step it up a little bit. I'm starting to get wet. This uh, is a pretty heavy mist coming down and some, some rain in, in between. And uh, get back in the house. I had to go back in. If you guys didn't notice, I had to go back in and get a hoodie. This north wind it dropped. It was 73. Now it's 53 and it is still dropping. And it's supposed to get even colder here by dark time into the overnight. Tomorrow morning is the first night of, I mean, first morning of black powder hunting here in Oklahoma. And I'm hoping to go if it is not pouring down. So I got a couple hundred hungry dogs over there staring at me. So we'll get them some food. Um, I don't know if I'm going to feed the big goats right now. They're still out in the big pasture right now grazing pretty good. I'll go ahead and start feeding them today. Why not, right? Did you girls not get your belly full already? It's like these chickens never quit eating.
So one good thing is uh, we did downsize, like I just said, on both sides of our farm. So these goats are downsized. The goats in the front field are downsized. So we have way less mouths to feed. So a bucket of feed like this weighs about 30 pounds and it goes a lot farther when you don't have as many mouths to feed. Corey said, oh, I'm hungry, Dad. This weather got cold, but we love it. Hey, Mr. Leesky. What do you know, buddy? Here, give everybody kisses. Give everybody kisses. <laughs> All right, come on. So the goats have not been getting fed. As you can see, they're out there grazing, browsing around. They don't even know what's coming. Do they, sis? An egg, here you go. One egg, over easy. Another egg over easy. Here, you want that? Good stuff. Some chickens pestering the girl. All right, let's go see. Goats! Come on, goats! Come on! Come on, goats! They're way out there. Come on, goofy goats! Come on, it's feeding time. Oh, their gate's closed. Almost closed. We can fix it. You guys haven't had this in a long time, huh? Oh, they got it open. They got it open. Alright, so for those of you that are new to the channel, I, uh, we built this feed bunk in here because we were tired of getting trampled by these bigger goats. Uh, you come in here, we used to have the feed troughs on the ground and stuff, and you walk in here with the bucket, these bigger goats will definitely knock you over. And you can see, they're just, they're made out of wood that I milled up from a sawmill and just some oak trees from our own property. So all this is 100% solid oak. And uh, it's lasted now, I think it's going on year three. Very durable, the goats can't break it. The goats are very destructible. But you can see, kind of made this little slide here. So I take my bucket, pour the feed down on this side. The feed kind of goes down into that little trough. And it's almost, well, it's probably like 26 feet long. And uh, so they got a trough of feed about 26 foot long. And that way everybody can run up and get food without trampling on each other. And uh, you can see the downside is quite a bit, so there's plenty enough room for everybody. Got their mineral feeders right there. There's another one on that side. The water troughs are on both sides of the pastures. One right there. We got one right there. Big water trough right there, which is a pond. And then they got two more in each one of those small pastures in that corner of the big field or the small field that are the hog pens we don't have hogs right now. The feed prices are just insane, crazy. So we gotta rely on other types of meat right now because we did not get any hogs as a butcher. We need to try to hopefully get some. We are uh, just about pretty much out on our sausage, bacon, and pork chops and stuff like that. We do still have some, but we're getting very low. So it is time to probably start shopping for a butcher hog. So I don't know why Leesky's being nice to the chickens right now. They are getting very brave. She will not allow that, I promise you that. If they start sticking their head under uh, her feed bucket, she'll get them. She don't put up with that. Mr. Leesky's a little more tolerable, I guess. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I am uh, gonna go try to get in the house, get warmed up, believe it or not. I am not used to this cold weather. It is a little bit cold now. He's like, Dad, you're a sissy. He said, why are you being a sissy? He said, I had to stay out here all day and all night. You don't see me crying. He says, I come out here step for step with you and feed and check on everybody. And I don't cry at all. He says, I just hope I can get a piece of that dog food here and there. So if you guys seen the last video, 
I did put a picture of the rat that he caught. The rat actually got his little nose right there on the side. I don't know if you guys could see that. The rat scratched him or bit him right on the side of the nose, but Smeagol got the better better of him and uh, made him breakfast that day. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, stay tuned. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to go back to the auction or not for sure, but if we do, we might end up coming home with at least a new farm animal, maybe multiple, you never know. So uh, make sure to subscribe, leave us a comment down below, and we'll see you next time. You gonna see if Lisky will share with you? Go get you a piece.